This video contains information based on the Incident Investigation Report published by the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, slash AIR-1801, on the taxiway overflight of Air Canada Flight 759er and Airbus 320 at San Francisco, California on July 7, 2017. It's important to note that this video does not establish detailed connections to the circumstances of this incident. However, using detailed information from the official NTSB incident report, its sole use is to visualize and explain the circumstances leading to the incident of Flight Air Canada 759er. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, is an independent federal agency dedicated to promoting aviation, railroad, highway, maritime, and pipeline safety. Established in 1967, the agency is mandated by the U.S. Congress through the Independent Safety Board Act of 1974 to investigate transportation accidents, determine the probable causes of the accidents, issue safety recommendations, study transportation safety issues, and evaluate the safety effectiveness of government agencies involved in transportation. Assignment of fault or legal liability is not relevant to the NTSB's statutory mission to improve transportation safety by investigating accidents and incidents and issuing safety recommendations. On July 7, 2017, Air Canada Flight 759er and Airbus A320 aircraft departed Toronto's Luster B. Pearson Airport for a routine flight to San Francisco, California, carrying 135 passengers and five crew members. The captain of Air Canada Flight 759er had over 20,000 hours of total flight time and more than 7,000 hours on the Airbus A320. With no previous accident or incident history, the captain's personnel records showed that he had no history of failed pilot check rides. The captain was in reserve duty before being called to commence the incident flight. Reserve duty is an assignment for a flight crew member on call at an accommodation or other facility at or near an airport. The sole purpose of reserve duty is to have a flight crew member available in case of a schedule irregularity. Pilots on reserve duty shall be close to the operation base in case of a schedule irregularity to report to work quickly. This requires a constant state of readiness for the flight crew member. The first officer was a Canadian airline transport pilot license holder with about 10,000 hours of total accumulated flight experience, including about 2,300 hours in the A320 family aircraft. The first officer had no history of incidents or accidents. During post-incident analyses, the first officer reported feeling well-rested at the commencement of flight duty. San Francisco International Airport has four runways. Runway 28 right, the runway involved in the incident, was equipped with a localizer aligned with the 284-degree runway heading. Taxiway C, Charlie, which was to the right of runway 28 right, as viewed from the approach end of the runway, was 12,330 feet or 3,758 meters long and 75 feet or 23 meters wide. Runway 28 left was scheduled to close at 2,300 hours. During the pre-flight preparation, the flight crew of Canadian Flight 759er received a pack of NOTAM information containing the information on the runway closure of runway 28 left at San Francisco at 2300. During routine pickup of SFO Automatic Terminal Information Service, or ATIS, Information Q, Quebec, via the airplane's ACAS system. Information on the runway 28 left closure was also available. A notice to airmen, NOTAM, also known as Notice to Air Missions, FAA definition, is a notice containing information concerning the establishment, condition, or change in any aeronautical facility, service, procedure, or hazard, the timely knowledge of which is essential to personnel concerned with flight operations. Night visual meteorological conditions prevailed at the time of the incident. According to Air Canada procedures, the selected bridge visual approach runway 28 right was followed. 
This procedure requires the pilot monitoring to manually tune the instrument landing system ILS, frequency for runway 28 right. The pilot monitoring on Air Canada 759er missed this manual tuning of the ILS 28 right frequency. On taxiway C, Charlie, four aircraft were awaiting takeoff and subsequent departure from San Francisco International. A United Airlines Boeing 787 headed for Singapore, carrying 252 persons. A Philippines Airlines Airbus A340 going to Manila with 254 passengers. United Airlines Flight 863, a Boeing 787 bound for Sydney with 252 passengers on board. And last in queue, United Airlines Flight 1118, a Boeing 737 destined for Cancun, Mexico with 179 passengers awaiting takeoff. The Air Canada flight approached SFO. In a post-incident interview, the captain reported that he thought he saw runway lights for runway 28 left and believed that runway 28 right was runway 28 left. The first officer was engaged with the cockpit workload inside the cockpit. When the captain asked the first officer to confirm with the tower controller that the runway was clear, the aircraft was aligned with the taxiway C, Charlie. The controller confirmed via radio that runway 28 right was clear. And uh, tower, just want to confirm, uh, Air Canada 759, uh, we see some lights on the uh, runway there, across the runway, can you confirm a clear to land? Air Canada 759, confirm, clear to land, runway 2A right, there is no one on 2A right, flight view. Okay, Air Canada 759. The Air Canada cockpit crew could not overcome the objective visual clues contradicting the fact that the airplane was aligned with a taxiway. The crew's belief, as a result of expectation bias, was that the taxiway was the intended landing runway. Flight 759er descended to an altitude of 100 feet and overflew the first airplane on the taxiway, United Airlines 1. this guy going? He's on the taxiway. The Air Canada pilots initiated a go-around as instructed by air traffic control. Air Canada go-around. In the go-around, I count 759. The airplane reached a maximum altitude of about 60 feet and overflew the second aircraft on the taxiway, Philippine Airlines Flight 115, before climbing again. No one on board the incident aircraft was injured, nor was the plane damaged. NTSB conclusions of the incident indicated, demonstrated breakdowns in crew resource management, or CRM, which manifested as non-compliance with Air Canada's standard operating procedures. The flight crew initiated low-altitude go-around over the taxiway, prevented a collision between the Air Canada aircraft and one or more other planes. The presentation of the information did not effectively convey the importance of the runway closure information and promote flight crew review and retention. The National Transportation Safety Board determines that the probable cause of this incident was the flight crew's misidentification of taxiway C as the intended landing runway, which resulted from the crew member's lack of awareness of the parallel runway closure due to their ineffective review of the notice to airmen, NOTAM information, before the flight and during the approach briefing. Contributing to the incident were number one, the flight crew's failure to tune the instrument landing system frequency for backup lateral guidance, expectation bias, fatigue due to circadian disruption and length of continued wakefulness, and breakdowns in crew resource management. And number two, Air Canada's ineffective presentation of approach procedure and NOTAM information. The NTSB identified the following safety issues as a result of this incident investigation. The need for consistent flight management system FMS auto-tuning capability within an air carrier's fleet. Need for more effective presentation of flight operations information to optimize pilot review and retention of relevant information. In this case, presentation of the information did not effectively convey the importance of the runway closure information and promote flight crew review and retention need for a method to more effectively signal a runway closure to pilots when at least one parallel runway remains in use.